I invite you to stand. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Um, today is the Feast of Epiphany. So once again, kind of like last weekend um, and the weekend before, when it comes to Christmas, when it comes to last weekend, Mary, Mother of God, uh, today, Epiphany, as you know, lands on a Sunday. And so here we are praying, um, not only giving the Lord the, what he's asked for, and this is, the, this is the key when it comes to Epiphany, is it's all about worship. It's all about what we bring to the Lord. So as we begin this Mass, one of the first things we get to bring to the Lord is we get to bring the Lord our brokenness. We get to bring the Lord our sins and our failings. We get to bring the Lord our true selves, especially the selves that need his grace and need him. God is not afraid of your weakness. He's not afraid of your sins. He's not afraid of your brokenness. In fact, at the beginning of every Mass, that's what God says, that's what I want first. And so as we approach him now to worship him, the first thing we worship him with, the first way we honor the Lord is by surrendering our sins and allowing him to give us his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to seek and to save the lost. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You live to intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy 
that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. For the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you. Dromedaries from Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed, to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. I'm Glory to you, o Lord. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out, and behold, the star that, had, that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wait, you have a seat. So um, one of the things that I've kind of noticed um, just about, about us as human beings, you know, kind of people, is um, a lot of times we want to just, we want to be somewhere. Here's what I mean by that. Um, <coughs> I mean, um, the number of people who just like, I want to go to the ocean and just look at it. It's just kind of striking to me. It's like, uh, or people like want to go to the Grand Canyon. I just want to see it. I take it all in. Um, I was thinking about this because a couple, couple weeks ago, before the semester ended, um, we, had a, we had a party from some, with some of our alumni. And uh, a couple of them got Taylor Swift tickets. And that was, I don't know if you know this, but there was this like massive thing about like people all day. In fact, they did this. They, they had their computers going all day in order to get these tickets. They had like a team of three. Both of them did. Um, so six people trying to get these, these tickets and they did it. It was like this massive thing because they just wanted, the idea was, I just want to be there. And I, cause I was asking them like, yeah, you know, you know, all of our songs already. Uh, you could just press play. You could just listen online. You could just, why? I, it wasn't like making fun. Just kind of like, what's the, the thing? And they said, I just want to be there. Which makes sense, you know, you go, go to the ocean, I just want to be there. I go to see the Grand Canyon, to see mountains. I just want to be in the mountains. I just want to be at a concert or be at the game. Which makes sense because as human beings, that's what we are, right? We're human beings. And so it makes sense that there's sometimes when just the valuable thing is that we're there, right? The valuable thing is that 
here I am. I'm just being here. At the same time, I struggle with that because um, if I go to the ocean, I think I want to get in that. Like I want to do something. If I, Grand Canyon, literally I went to Grand Canyon one time and I remember thinking, do I have enough time to do the rim to rim? Because you know, you can hike down one rim to the other rim and then rim to rim and back again. Like I just, I don't want to just, it was impress, impressive. I'll say that. Grand Canyon, amazing. But I want to do something there. Same thing in, when it comes to the mountains. I love the mountains. They're just gorgeous. But every time I see a mountain peak, I think, can I get up there? I, wa I want to do something. And, and so again, I know that, I'll say this too, every concert I've ever been to, I always think like, what if like one of their singers drops out? Like they'll need some help and I'll, I'll be the person to help them. It could, because it's one thing, I also have a highly inflated sense of self. Um, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but, but there's that, um, that sense of like, I don't just want to be here, I want to do something. Okay, both are good. We need to understand this. Because the error falls in when we emphasize one to the exclusion of the other. There are people who are overworked, right? There are people who just like, it's all about doing, 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 and you have, they have to be reminded that we're not human, do, human doings, we're human beings. Yes, 100%. At the same time, while we are human beings, we're made to do. Like we're, we're literally, the way that God made us is to do. To do a lot of things. To do, where he made us to create. He made us to build. He made us to fix things. He made us to work. He made us for so many things. The biggest thing God ever made us for is at the heart of our identity. It's the, actually the heart of his identity. The biggest thing God ever made us to do is to love. I can be in love, 100%, gift. But to choose to love, that also is a gift. And so, so while we have our beings, we're called to do many things. And the primary thing we're called to do is we're called to love. And so we've said this many, many times, the church has defined love as love is willing the good of the other. And so whether I love a stranger or whether I love my mom or if spouses love each other, it's not just romantic feelings, not just feelings of affection. It's choosing to do something. It's choosing to will that good, the good of that person. So that's, that's massive. That's how we love. When it comes to God, we're made to love God above everything, above everyone. We're made to love God. But here is the question. If love is willing the good of the other, how do we love God? Because God is goodness itself. God doesn't need us at all. I don't need to, if I will God's good, what, what it, I can't add to his goodness. So what is it to love God? Well, we can love God in three ways. One is, St. John talks about this, not today, but he talks about other places in the Bible. He says, um, we can know we love God if we take care of our brother and sister. If we love the people around us, if we love the people that need our love, they need our attention, they need our help. When we love them, we're loving God. That's one. We love God by loving the people we see, our brother that we see, our sister that we see. The second way we love God, is we love God by obeying him. Jesus said this, you can't claim to love God and not obey his commandments. The way we, the way we love God is through obedience to his commandments. And so if I'm ever questioning, like, do I love, really love God enough? What I have to do is I don't just look at how I'm feeling. I have to look at how I'm acting. Am I choosing to obey him? So I can love God by willing the good of the people around me who need love. I can love God by obeying him. But the third way we love God, it's, a, it's an extension, ex expansion, extension of obeying him. We love God when we worship God. We love God when we worship God as he has asked us to worship him. And this is the key thing. We love God when we obey him by worshiping him as he's asked us to worship him. Because we have to understand, you probably know this already. I've said this many times, I'll say it again today on the Feast of the Epiphany. The heart of religion is not our creed, although our creed is really important. And the heart of religion is not the moral life, although the moral life is very important. The heart of religion, every religion around the world, the heart of religion is worship. The heart of religion is worship, is, is that sense of what do we give to God? And that's why the key thing is this, the heart of worship is not feelings. The heart of worship is not simply uh, doing anything. The heart of worship is going to be sacrifice. It's always going to be sacrifice. This is the heart of worship, which is the heart of religion, which is the heart of what it is to love God. Sacrifice. Why am I bringing this up on a day like today? Well, I'm bringing it up on a day like today because the Feast of the Epiphany, what do you have? You have the first people who ever worshipped Jesus Christ incarnate on this, on this earth. You have the, the Magi, right? They journey from afar and they bring Jesus 
gifts and they offer those gifts. That's a sacrifice. And those gifts all mean something. I, of course, you know, we have gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And so theologians have said many, many times that the gold is a symbol of Jesus being worshipped as, as king, uh, that the frankincense is a symbol of Jesus being worshipped as priest who offers incense. The myrrh is a sign of Jesus' inevitable death and is being anointing at death, anointed at death that he's ultimately going to be not just the priest who offers the sacrifice, he's going to be the victim who offers the sacrifice, who's being offered in the sacrifice. These three magi, these three gifts that come before the Lord God incarnate, they worship him, they bow down, they prostrate themselves before him, and they offer a sacrifice. And this is, this is absolutely going to be so essentially critical for every one of us because the heart of religion is worship and the heart of worship is sacrifice. You know, um, a little while ago, I had an interview with a, a, a newspaper and the, the author of the newspaper is a Catholic and great, great guy, uh, as far as I know. <laughs> and uh, he asked the question, he said, have you noticed that because of COVID, fewer people are returning to in-person mass? And I talked about how it's super important that everyone uh, gets back to mass. If they can be at, at, at mass at all, then they need to be at mass, obviously. And he said, yeah, I know that because, he says, because the point is you need to receive the Eucharist. You can't just watch Mass online because the point is to receive the Eucharist. And I had to stop and say, actually, no, that's not true. One of the points, one of the gifts of the Mass is we get to receive the Eucharist. Yes, 100%. I mean, Jesus made it very, very clear that unless we eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, we don't have life. So, yes, very, very important to be able to receive the Eucharist. Absolutely. I'm not going to deny that. But the point of the Mass is not to receive Holy Communion. The point of Mass is to offer the sacrifice of the Son of God to the Father. The point of the Mass is to have this, this sacrifice, but the sacrifice of the Last Supper and the sacrifice of Calvary, which are brought into one here at every Mass, is to offer that sacrifice to the Father. The whole point is to love God, which means the whole point of our lives is to go to Mass. The point of our lives is to worship God by offering the greatest sacrifice any of us could ever possibly hope or even imagine we could be part of. And that's why we're, that's why this piece of the Epiphany is all about worship. And it's all about sacrifice. It's all about what we do every single Sunday and every single day in so many Catholic churches. We recognize, we recognize this. We recognize that I'm not loving God. If I know that he has asked me, commanded me, in fact, to do this in memory of him, to offer the sacrifice in memory of him, to offer himself, united with the ministerial priest, to the Father, and I stay away. We're made to love. The biggest thing, the best thing, the primary thing we're called to do, made to do, is to love. The one we're called to love beyond anyone else is God himself in the way he has asked us to love him. Yes, serving our brothers and sisters. Yes, obeying his commandments. But this particular commandment of do this in memory of me is the critical thing that makes all of the difference in the world. It makes all the difference in the world. But the question is, does it make the difference in my life? Here's what I mean. I think a lot of times we show up to Mass and we leave unchanged. We show up to Mass and we leave the same as we walked into Mass. It's, it's, this is supposed to make all the difference in the world, but it doesn't even make a difference in my life. Because again, and again, it might not be my fault, it might not be your fault, but it might be that we just didn't expect that anything would happen, didn't, wouldn't, didn't expect that anything should change. I went to Mass, checked the box, now I'm leaving. But how could we possibly come into contact to encounter the true and living God and not be somewhat changed? In fact, the Magi, what does it say? It says, they offered their gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and they were warned in a dream so they departed for their home by another way. And I got to tell you, saints and people in the church for years have read that, for 2,000 years, have read that and said, yes, that's what's supposed to happen. I came to the Lord one way, but when I worshiped him, it changed me and I had to go home a different way. I couldn't go home the same way. I couldn't return the same person I was when I walked into the Lord's presence. So why do we? Like, why is it the case that so often we come to Mass and we leave unchanged. When the whole point of it is I've loved the Lord in such a way that I'm not the same anymore. I think part of it is because we're missing two things. A, we're missing 
out on the reality that we're here to sacrifice. We're here to unite our prayers as kingdom priests, right, with the prayers of the ministerial priest at the altar, who he is united to the great high priest, Jesus. We forget, we re or we never knew, that what we're supposed to be doing here is worshiping. We're supposed to be offering the sacrifice. We're supposed to be uniting our hearts. When the priest is praying those words, it's not like, okay, get done, get done. Okay, amen, that was my part. No, your part, our part together is to be saying, okay, Lord, Father in heaven, receive this sacrifice. May you be glorified. May this world be sanctified. May this world be changed and transformed. But if we just show up and we sit and watch, of course we're unchanged. That's why, you know, go look at the Grand Canyon. It's neat. You hike the Grand Canyon, you're different. You go and look at the ocean, it's cool. You get in the ocean and swim around. Okay, you're going to be different. Go to the concert, awesome. Take it in. You get called up on stage, your life is different from then on out. And same thing is supposed to be true when it comes to the Mass. We're not here to watch. We're not here to just be here. We're here to do something. We're here to offer up the sacrifice of the Son to the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit. We're also called to do the other thing. And this is the last thing. Remember the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. Gold for a king. Frankincense for a priest. And myrrh for the one who died. Jesus is not just the priest who offers the sacrifice. He is the sacrifice that's offered. And so are you. At every Mass, so are you. In fact, we even pray it in the Eucharistic prayer. Say, Lord, make of us an eternal offering to you. Make of us an eternal oblation to you. Let us be, our lives, be a gift. If I go to Mass and I return unchanged, it's probably because I didn't offer anything. Let's say that again. If I go to Mass and I leave the same way I walked in, it's because I didn't offer anything. I didn't give him anything. What do, you mean, what do you mean give him? I didn't give him what I was afraid of. I didn't give him what I love. I didn't give God access to my hopes. I didn't give God access to my weaknesses. I didn't give God anything. I just showed up and watched. But you are not baptized to show up and watch. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth so you could show up and watch. He didn't give us the gift of the Eucharist so you could show up and watch. He didn't die and rise from the dead and send his Holy Spirit into your life and my life so we could show up to Mass and watch. He did those things so that we could be part of the sacrifice, so we could unite our lives and our sacrifices to his life and to his sacrifice. He did this so that every time we approached him, we would be changed. So that every time we walked into the church and offered the sacrifice with the priest, with Jesus himself, we would be different. We would be more like him. And we could never return to our home in the same way. We go back home, but every time we go back home by a different way. I invite you to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Amen. Confident in our Father's love for us and that he receives all of our gifts as well as our prayers, we now approach him with all of our needs. That the church may tirelessly reveal the glory of Christ to all nations and peoples who do not yet know him, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the manifestation of the glory of Christ will enable all nations to also recognize the sanctity of each and every human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That missionaries may find new strength through today's feast and may enjoy the support of the Christian people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That that God's people may more deeply discover the mystery of the Eucharist and worship the Lord as did the wise men of old, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may discover in their sufferings a manifestation of the passion of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may share eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. We continue our prayer by praying for vocations here in the Diocese of Duluth and in your home diocese as well. Almighty Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations and holy marriages in our diocese. Help us to be generous in our response to your call. Choose from our homes those who are needed for your work and strengthen us with the courage to say yes and to follow you. Help us as a diocese, as a parish, as families to encourage and foster vocations to the priesthood permanent diaconate, and consecrated life. We commend our prayers to our patroness, Mary, Queen of the Rosary, and ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours. And begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time. So that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call strang humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with the, all the angels we praise you. As in joyful celebration we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all your saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, or merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap Let us pray. 
<clears throat> Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere the, with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple quick announcements. One is I'm just grateful for Ali. As she's been here for the last couple weekends, last couple masses. It was such a gift. Um, well, also, as we you probably noticed last weekend, Mary Mother of God, we had uh, our girls, the female missionaries here, uh, Katie and Emmeline. The boys showed up for Epiphany. Two of the Magi, we call them. That's what they call. That's what they're known around here. Um, <laughs> but Noah and Brady, um, they're not the same person. Um, is that Christmas? I think I said something. I don't know. Um, but uh, this last weekend, this last weekend, we had an opportunity. We had a bunch, or last week, a bunch of our students down to St. Louis for this thing called SEEK. It was the Focus National Conference. And uh, yeah, just please ask that you pray for our students. Pray, pray that um, whatever graces they received over the course of this last week uh, just are sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. That just whatever happened in their lives over the course of this last week, um, whatever God did, just that... It, it bring, he, God brings it to fulfillment. If you don't mind, just please pray for our students and pray for our missionaries, for myself and, and Lauren, of course, Allie, everyone who's here. Um, yeah, that what God has done, what he's begun, he brings to completion. That would be a great prayer. Another great prayer is St. Michael, the archangel, defend, defend us in battle. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God, God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, Cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.